Um, and then one of the kids, um, he wants to, I think he's like nine, he wants to be a vet. And, uh, and he talked about wanting to be like one of the best veterinarians in El Salvador. And, uh, and like out back, they now have um, a few animals that they get to take care of and he gets to like work with and learn from. And so he now has a better chance of actualizing that dream or that potential by being in the environment that he's in. So. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. And with innovation in this space, whether it's 3D printing or fintech, when you're swinging for the fences, you're going to have some epic failures, too. You're going to have some major misses. And how do you handle those setbacks and failures? And when do you know to, to move on, to change strategies? Because this is a, a even more unique situation because it's such a, a passion of yours and a core mission. I think many founders, their mission might be a little bit more monetary or maybe they just stumbled into it and now it's working. But something that's so in line with your personal mission, your core values, those failures have to sting. Yeah, for sure. I think um, they sting, but if you set them up in the right way, like when we set up more risky projects, you know, we are, you, you have to obviously be willing to take a risk where if something doesn't work, then you're going to learn from it and you can move on. Um, I, I think there's a big difference in taking what I call calculated risk versus just dumb risk, right? A dumb risk would be I'm just going to kind of bet like, you know, 50% of the company on this thing that I'm not sure about. I mean, that's very rare. Like you need to have an insane amount of conviction to do that. And some people do that from time to time. Like that's definitely not me or us. Like we try to take calculated risk where we can, we'll take a risk and like, we don't want it to fail, but if it fails, like we're going to be okay. Right. That could be, you know, like maybe you know, 10 or 15% or even higher 20% of our budget for that year, which sucks and is not what we want or intended to. But the worst case is we, we tried something that we thought had breakthrough potential. We learned along the way and we can either take those learnings and try something similar, or we can say, you know what, this is just too hard and we need to go put our efforts out elsewhere. Yeah. And I think understanding that the risks are worth it based on past risks you've taken, right? Being able to take those lessons with you throughout all of this helps quite a bit. When you now have an opportunity to change people's lives, I mean, when we think about housing, it fundamentally will change that family's life and multi-generations of that family. What are some of your favorite success stories? Because when we think about charities that really have impact, Yes, there are large numbers and everyone can get behind this idea of millions, but when you think about the actual stories of changing lives, that's what really get people to open up their wallets. What stands out from your experience thus far? Yeah, I'll give one story. Um, so there's there's a family and so new stories uh, a little uh, more than about six years old. And one of our first communities um, was built about five years ago in an area called Nuevo Cuscatla in El Salvador. And um, as a family of five, um, when we were building this first community, like it was really cool that we were building it, but it was also the question of, well, this is one of our first ones. What's it going to be like in five years, you know? Um, and so I got to go back there uh, about a couple months ago. It was my first time traveling to the field since COVID. And, um, you know, I got to meet this family that's been in their home for almost five years. And it was, uh, it was um, two young kids and a, a teenage um, daughter. The daughter is actually blind. And she um, before had to walk up a very, very, very steep hill that was prone to landslides to get to their shack. And I would walk up there and I'm in pretty good shape. And I mean, I would like lose my breath. It was like so steep and so hard. And I was just thinking like, she used to have to do this every day. And now, you know, she's in a house and she, um, she actually now has a place, she loves music. So 
She has a place to um, to actually practice the piano and sing, and she's getting a music scholarship. Right, that's like one example. Um, uh, her her parents, um, by having a new home, have increased their income enough to where they've actually built an additional room onto the house, um, another bedroom. That's actually uh, this. Her, their daughter's now has her own bedroom for the condition that she's in, and we didn't fund that with charity. They paid for that themselves. They built that themselves because their income increased by having the house. Um, and then one of the kids, um, he wants to. I think he's like nine. He wants to be a vet, and uh, and he talked about wanting to be like one of the best veterinarians in El Salvador. And uh, and like out back, they now have um, a few animals that they get to take care of, and he gets to like work with and learn from. And so, he now has a better chance of actualizing that dream or that potential by being in the environment that he's in. So, that's one family story. And um, you know, we're lucky to have at the end of this year, hopefully, uh, a little more than four thousand of those. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Congratulations on all the hard work. As someone who started in their 20s as a very young leader to where you are now, if you could go back in time and give yourself advice, what advice would you have for you starting out in your 20s? Man, I love that question. Um, I would say to um, be absolutely obsessed with learning, um, but don't just stop at learning. Uh, also, you have you have to do right. You have to you have to take risk. Um, I would say that uh, your 20s is. I would argue probably your best time to go out and and take calculated risk with your with your career. Um, it doesn't have to mean you know not everybody's listening has to start their own organization, right? Of course, but it could be maybe joining a startup. It could be going into a different career that you know on paper your friends or your peers would be like, wait, why are you going to do that? Like that's different or that's not the same as the route that you could go. But if you feel that pull to do it, like. You have to do it. You have to do it, or you're going to regret doing it. Um, and then, and the other thing I would encourage somebody with is, uh, even if it doesn't work the way that you want, you are you're truly going to learn more than going a traditional, safer route, um, and and that is going to have a bigger return. So um, I would just say uh, to it to somebody in their early twenties. Um, to, to learn obsessively, to take action, and to, to do something that is against the status quo ex if you feel a pull to do that. Excellent advice for everyone in our audience who may be at that exact same crossroads wondering themselves. We love asking each of our guests what their X factor is, what it is that makes you extraordinary. What do you think it is for yourself? What is your X factor? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm by no means like, pretty much ever like just the smartest person in the room like I, over the last I guess five years my resume has gotten a little better than where I started from but it's I still view myself as very much you know an underdog I think my x factor my advantage has been um uh there's you know there's a there's an, a, a mantra that um bold ideas attract bold people you know and and fortune favors the bold and I think that's probably been one of the main reasons for some of the growth we've had and, and my learnings is like realizing that it's scarce to do something bold, right? A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people think about it. There are not many people that actually do it. And so just by actually doing it um, is scarce and is actually rare and is different. And I think, um, that's probably been new stories X factor and probably my X factor as a leader. Incredible. Thank you for sharing your journey with our audience. Where can they go to find more about how to support you on this amazing mission? Yeah, you can go to our website is a uh, newstorycharity.org or just Google new story um, on social media. Our handle is uh, new story charity. And then for myself, um, I'm on social, mainly Twitter and um, Instagram. It's just my name, which is at Brett Hagler. Thank you so much, Brett. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys.